All right. Hello. Welcome, everybody. I have yet another wonderful treat for all of you. And I've been looking forward to this for months. <laughs> so today we are with Julia Balaz, who is a galactic astrologer. And we're going to hear what that is for any of you who don't know. Um, but Julia, Julia, I first learned about Julia because I saw a video, a recording you did with Pam Gregory and then one you did with Heather Ensworth. And um, and I immediately loved your presence and I loved your your spirit, I think is the best way to put it. Um, and then a few months ago, I think maybe in June or July, I was doing my praying and I got told very emphatically by the spirit world, ask Heather, Heather Ensworth, to connect you with Julia today. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and so I thought, really? And I I triple checked, you know, with my guides and they said, yes, do it <laughs> today. <laughs> so, so I reached out to Heather and she said, oh, I would love to connect you with Julia. I think you two would get along so well. And then we connected and I agree. <laughs> we do. So it's really, really wonderful to be with you. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Martha. I was delighted to receive your invitation. And certainly when when you connected, and it was a no-brainer. Yeah, it, it always felt right uh, to be oh. together. So I look forward for our journey to start and see where it takes us. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. And I will say, so so Julia does beautiful she has her own youtube channel she does um she's a creator of galactic astrology courses and um and you're doing me the wonderful wonderful honor of being a guest speaker in the astrology course that i will be hosting starting in february which everyone is welcome to join and we can talk a little more about it at the end but um so so honored I, again I was told very clearly I was given a very clear vision of who I was who was meant to be part of that course uh, as speakers and you were one of them and when you said yes I went thank you thank you <laughs> so beautiful so anyway um wonderful so why don't we start with can you explain in your own words what is galactic astrology Galactic astrology in the way we uh, practice it, when I say we, I mean me, myself and I, and the students of my courses, is by acknowledging that as souls, we journey through cosmos, through many incarnations, physical and non-physical, and we use astrology, galactic astrology, to offer us clues and validations to those stories that we feel innately. Many people remember these um, other lives whether through spontaneous recalls, usually when certain transit hits on the nodes that awaken the memory from certain star systems, or people remember their other incarnations through regression hypnosis, through deep meditation, through um, their ayahuasca journeys or any other plant medicine. So they have these um, memory recalls um, experientially, and then there is always our, you know, better brainwave state, uh, that part of our analytical, logical part that keeps doubting those experiences because we cannot really uh, touch them or really prove them somehow. Yet with galactic astrology, we found over time that the proof is there. You can find those stories through the stars that are aligning to planets at a time of your birth. Because I believe through the many years witnessing so many, many stories that when our soul is incarnating into this physical reality if it is important for our soul in this incarnation to retain strong connection let's say to pleiades we will be born at a time when one of the planets is in strong alignment with the pleiades usually either if it's rising or setting like in some way uh, shape or form pleiades will be astrologically and astronomically uh, dominant in your natal chart um, so we acknowledge that we are connected to stars. We acknowledge that we are connected to greater cosmos. And we use not just astrology, but also intuitive tuning in to our soul records to find information that is most relevant to support our evolution of consciousness. 
And uh, I just want to say that while we use this galactic astrology, the big point also is that it's just, we also acknowledge that it's just a stage that we need to kind of grasp onto to help us release any limitations of our human conditioning based on trauma over many, many generations, when suddenly people realize that actually there's so much more than the product of their immediate environment. Suddenly their frequency expands, they they feel more higher vibrational, their heart expands, they feel connected to much more, and that starts shifting their reality, they start healing, they start releasing the the limitations of who they thought they were. So for time being, this stage of galactic astrology experimentation is really important. It really helps them. And then at some point they realize they can also now release their labeling themselves as star seeds because the next stage after that is just being connected to all that is. And it doesn't matter whether you're Pleiadian or Arcturian or any other, you're galactic human here to bring uh, experience of unity in the physical reality, helping to heal the DNA of human avatar and just co-creating something beautiful and in, in, uh, in experience with everyone else around us. So they're just like stages of our consciousness, evolution and expansion. So, yes. The, and that last part of what you were just sharing fits so well with my own, my own perspective on everything. And that I, I hadn't heard you say that before. So that was really helpful actually, because I, we can talk about this maybe more in, in a little while, but I, I personally really am shown that my role is to, is to hold space for the whole time space continuum, everything. So it includes all of the start, the whole cosmos of infinity. Right. So I personally, well, I do feel drawn at certain moments to particular star systems for sure, but not in the sense of identifying with one in particular mm -hmm. or yeah, it feels more like yeah. a, like, yeah, just holding the reality of all of it. And then sometimes certain ones will come in and really need to connect with me or something will, will be present. Yeah. Beautiful. And that is, that's such a great point because people will find when they uh, put their natal data into calculator that shows them what stars were aligned at the time of their birth, oftentimes there are multiple different star systems that are very dominant uh, throughout the chart. So which one am I? Um, and like you said, there are, based on transits, there are times when any one of these star systems will pop up in your reality where you really need to consciously connect to it and integrate information and experiences in connection to the star system to help you in the current incarnation. You have to remember, it's always about holding the space for here and now. So they, they come up at different times. So it's not like we have to uh, create a hierarchy of which star system is better. Um, it's not like that. It's more about supporting us throughout the journey at different times for different reasons. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, for example, I, I was just, I was just taking your, one of your courses two months ago and, and I was just, I just tuned in. Okay. What, what galactic being is most alive for me just if on an instinct level? And I thought, oh, the Andromeda galaxy, definitely. Right. So I, I looked at where it would be in terms of the ecliptic, if it were on the ecliptic. <laughs> anyway, um, that's a different question actually I have yeah. for you later. Yeah. Um, and it is near my south node, <laughs> so, natally, right? Yeah. So I went, oh, okay, <laughs> that makes sense. Perfect. Yeah, and the north, the north node, the transiting north node was very near on basically i was I'm, I'm currently having my nodal reversal right so very good and that's so interesting because the andromedan galaxy star seeds or people who have strong connection through astrology to andromeda galaxy they all always feel like home is everywhere like everywhere i am i'm home like this whole universe is my home they don't identify with any particular one and really? they're really, and they're really good at just holding space of peace and grounded presence amidst chaos and really i feel this andromedan frequency is going to be very very strong especially next year for that particular reason that we are overwhelmed with information and perspectives and opinions and andromedans are really good at holding 
space and being centered while everything is shifting and changing all the time. So it's such a beautiful validation. Thank you. That's a, well, and that's exactly what I'm told my role is literally is to mm-hmm. hold space for existence yeah. while this whole chaos does its thing. Perfect. I just am mm-hmm. supposed to just be steady. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's so, so fascinating. Um, yeah. So in a little while, I would love to talk more about, you know, like the current, um, the current galactic astrological phenomena that are happening and you see coming up. But before we get there, uh, I would also love to hear about your journey. So how did you come to this point? Um, what, yeah, whatever you feel comfortable sharing about you and how you, how you got here. Yeah, I kind of briefly touched on that already, that really the story with the galactic astrology started when I had the privilege of holding space for people that really opened up their most vulnerable parts. And um, I was into astrology since my early years. I learned it in the big city library through books that were in Slovakian language. That's where I'm from. And I've always used it for my own understanding of why I am the way I am, just kind of deep psychology of my own being, and then also exploring just my immediate family members. And then when I started um, doing the regression hypnosis, I saw that as an amazing opportunity for me to deepen my understanding of astrology through studying their charts after their session. So I had an amazing uh, uh, opportunity to hear first through their conscious mind, explaining their life story. And they would talk about everything from early childhood until the day they met me, what were the main themes throughout their life. And then for three, four hours, then being kind of under, going into deep state um, hypnosis, where we journeyed through their subconscious and their higher selves came through. We looked at various past lives. We look at ancestral stories and always these emotional experiences that were coming through. So that was also shown to me in great detail. And then after in my own time, in the uh, evening, nighttime, I would look at their chart and just kind of feel into where are the clues to what they were telling me and things that stood out the most first were the lunar nodes that they really are accurate like there really is a theme if you have lunar say south node in in aries the past lives that people were regressed to spontaneously by their own higher self choosing what's most relevant they were the themes of arian lives you know um so that was a big uh, kind of mind-blowing experience for us. I have a whole video on going through all the 12 um, archetypes of lunar nodes and what types of past life stories were, were coming through. It's somewhere on my YouTube channel when you type in lunar nodes. So you have, uh, yeah, you have a, a lot of wonderful videos for free on your YouTube channel. I mean, just so, you. so, so many. Yeah. Yeah. So that was good. And then at some point, um, I think around 2019, the clients that started coming through more and more, and certainly 2020 was full on, the galactic information was coming through. And not just through my own session, it was happening across the board with uh, a lot of QHHD practitioners. This is a Dolores Cannon technique. So I was a member of a forum where all the practitioners were discussing their experiences with others, and people really were starting to regress to lives that were not earthly. And a lot of galactic information started coming through. So there were many common themes. So I suppose I had the um, privilege yet, the word again, to feel into a frequency of a being and tapping into not just their earthly experience, but starting to feel what it feels like when someone has a strong Syrian connection or Archerian or Pleiadian. And at some point, you know, when you're exposed to these over a long period of time, you start noticing them within a few seconds you're like oh this is a syrian signature this is a pleiadian signature that really is different to um, each of these star systems and then once you are consciously aware of it you just get validation after validation after validation once you're paying attention to it so you know it's it's just such a beautiful uh, experience to to learn astrology through kind of the other way around rather than me taking courses or taking an astrology school where you learn the data first and then you apply to life. I was taught through life experience and then looking for it in the charts. 
you know yes. so that was really really good and then when the stars came in they started paying attention to to stars uh, noticing that people who are able to go really deep and channel amazing profound wisdom of their own higher selves that usually happen on days when we had strong alignment to certain stars that were also prominent in their individual charts. So whether Sirius, Arcturus, Pleiades, those were the early ones that I paid attention to really closely first because there was a lot of information about these uh, online. There are books written on Pleiadians, uh, books written on Syrians, Arcturians, and things like that. So those were the first ones. And then I started expanding to, to all the others. So, yeah, and then you know clients started coming through and I started sharing with them what I'm seeing in their astrological chart I started looking at their charts before they came in and then just paying attention to what they're saying so by the end of their session I would say actually I you know what you're saying and experiencing is actually in your charts or you're beautifully aligned with your uh, life's purpose with your life's potential so there was another kind of healing experience for them where they felt reassured and felt happy and at peace that they're exactly where they're meant to be all is well and uh, then people started becoming curious and asking me for more information so I started putting the courses together and my goodness <laughs> it, the, the feedback and the stories that continue to uh, come to me through emails and messages is there's just there's so much validation in when we bring stars to astrology and uh, really to experiences that are happening on such a large scale uh you know in our hum human uh consciousness collectively now people really are feeling like they are connected to certain star systems people are gazing at, at night sky there are so many that feel like that that oh my god home is out there um so it uh, the, the usual feedback usually is that you gave me the missing puzzle pieces and i finally understand why I'm here and what's my purpose and that it's really important for me to anchor the frequency of love and peace and wisdom amidst the crumbling structure uh, that we are all witnessing collectively so it just brings a lot of healing and encouragement um, for many people yeah absolutely so something I've been thinking about a lot um, I'm curious to get your perspective on this is I took your course. Then I've been taking a, a two other star related courses because I feel very called to learn about them. And something I've been thinking about with regard to the stars, but also just re with regard to astrology in general is kind of like you said, um, I would say from my perspective, the majority of the approaches to learning astrology I'm realizing are pretty mental, like very in the mind. I mean, my background is mostly in, in evolutionary astrology and I'm, I'm realizing there's so much depth and richness there. And I, my life was changed by it. Absolutely. I'm not denying that in the slightest. And I'm realizing how, how much, um, <clears throat> like, let's say learning about Venus and evolutionary astrology can be very, very cognitive. Um, and, and so also when I'm, when I'm noticing various people's approaches to stars, it seems like there's a, a wide range of the way that people can interact with the stars or the planets or any of it. It's like, there's, there's one version, if I'm going to make it into extremes, there's one version of thinking of any cosmic entity as an object right i'm going to learn about xyz planet or xyz star and i'm going to be able to describe it and i'm going to be able to repeat information i've learned about it which has its place and is definitely part of you know i want to learn certainly and then what i feel what i personally feel much more drawn to and i feel you this in your own energy um is what I'm really drawn to is much more the the being or the essence or the light of every cosmic entity, right? So, so for example, I mean, okay, so this is my reflection of you, but I don't know you very well, right? So, so you correct me if I'm getting this wrong, or I would love to hear anything you have to say about this. My sense of you 
is that you are so connected with light. Like I just experienced you as having so much light coming in and you're very um, light filled being in my experience, which is part of why I'm so drawn to you. Right. So <clears throat> why I resonate so much just by your presence. But when I, when I imagine you tuning into these star systems or anything in astrology at all, I, my sense is that you are connecting light with light um, or something along those lines. So I'm just curious to hear about your own personal way of being. I don't, it doesn't seem like a mental thing. Maybe it partly is, but anyway. I hear what you're saying. Really, really yeah. good point. Yeah. And yeah, we are. So I'm, I'm glad you're bringing it up because what I've noticed after I published my courses and people every now and then would mention a name of someone who has a book on stars or like ancient uh, astrologers talking about different stars. And then when, when I looked at that and when I when I read that information, it felt darker. It felt lower frequency to what I've been experiencing. Like it, it, felt, it feels different. Like I, I would look at it and I would spend only, I don't know, 20 minutes and I couldn't yeah. anymore because it just felt outdated. It yes. felt, uh, or or maybe just not in resonance with my being. Maybe for a reason that I perhaps didn't realize until until now. So what I'm guiding the practitioners in the bigger course, the Galactic Astrology Practitioner Course, is to to tune into stars with a clean slate, and in particular when they are tuning for different clients because. We are noticing that our brain is able to tap into past, present, future, really in a quantum way. That's why we call the modality quantum soul guidance, where every star we realize and its planets and moons, they have also their past, present and future. And so yes. we can, like, for example, Orion star systems, they have a lot of drama there, but there is also a lot of peace before the wars and a lot of peace after wars. So where are we tapping into? My light is flickering. Or um, Draco, uh, constel Draco yeah, constellation and its star systems, there is a lot of bad reputation there. But and anytime I tune to it, I connect to something very ancient and very um, in tune with archetypal organic energies uh, that are governing our universe. So it's really up to each individual whether you tap into the shadow side or the light side of any star system any being any entity and also when you mentioned that you know there with, with traditional astrology or in with certain teachers the celestial bodies are considered being objects whereas in my experience through witnessing people regressing to them feeling like they are the star or they are the planet like they felt and there was so much high frequency and pure consciousness of source like but you know you know they would literally say oh my god i'm a star and they would just bawling crying that they are a star emanating so much light that gives light life to planets within their orbit and then they would feel that they can actually consciously telepathically connect to all the other millions of stars and again just bawling crying feeling that beautiful connection and then they were shown that actually they send a fractal of their consciousness to be on earth at this time because the whole cosmos felt discord of planet earth that really was calling in for healing for help so a lot of light came in to go to help her go through the transformational period of her ascension through her natural cycle so when i connect to stars and how they translate in our natal charts like you say we look for something that is of light and love because that's what we came here to bring and if we are sometimes shown the stories uh, um, historically through all kinds of uh, conflicting situations of polarity playing itself out in other star systems too not just on earth this is what we have here is just like an echo of ancient stories across cosmos we look at it from higher perspective now because i believe that's what we came here to do to heal the soul records of trauma not just on earth but across the cosmos so we have this capacity now as we are witnessing through so many light workers 
to hold higher perspective, accept what was, and bring really compassion, love, acceptance into it. And how can we uh, learn to coexist together with different perspectives, different frequencies, while maintaining harmony and well-being of the planetary being of the whole cosmos. So yeah, there's different ways of tuning into stars. And I would love to, at some point, have the privilege of time to write um, new material where we can offer updated version of the frequencies of stars and how they manifest in our realities now in the current era, rather than, for example, Algol, uh, description from the ancients would be you will most likely die by your head being being chopped off. You know, it's not like right. <laughs> um, and no. I think that more and more people are tapping to astrology to intuition. I really feel the feminine frequency is coming strong and to astrology. And it's actually amazing to see majority or it seems to be like there's more women, at least in my perspective doing astrology nowadays than hundreds of years ago. So it's very good that we're now balancing and bringing the emotional, uh, sorry, not emotional, the intuitive side to it, um, rather than having maintaining as, it as mental um, discipline. It's, it's changing, certainly. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And to be able to integrate both, to both learn from what has come before and to really tap into our innate connection with all of it and yes. have, have it come through us again yeah and, and we kind of have to we kind of have to i feel now because it, it certainly is evolving rapidly like there are such quantum leaps in astrology field that i'm observing through the community that i interact with in such a short amount of time we started paying attention closely to stars in shortly after that the uh deep black holes although there were pioneers like Philip Sedgwick and anyone else who he inspired. Sorry, I'm not sure what's going on with this flickering light. <laughs> it's, like, it's just very shimmering. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so in, we started more and more, many people now are paying attention to the galactic center, super galactic center and beyond. We have those included in our calculator. Now the Cooper belt objects we started looking at them and adding stars to so what does it mean if i have like sedna now is conjunct pleiades and sun mars conjunct alpha centauri so a lot of those uh, star seeds are being activated and healing their story of betrayal they've experienced through masculine energies and depending on which house it is in your chart it either happens through the collective or with your father or partner or it's just so amazing to see it how it really is like things are coming to surface in relation to Pleiades to Alpha Centauri if you tap to that or you see it as something that happened on earth but actually it goes beyond that so it, it's really cool. And just yesterday, we had a conversation in our community where practitioners are starting to attract clients that are connecting to other galaxies. So we have a whole list of galaxies uh, wow. that for now, we are just shown a glimpse, but we cannot really fully tap into the records there. And I, we believe it's just about timing that, you know, little by little, but it, it's expanding into crazy uh, lengths. Uh, so beautiful well and that taps so much into what I've been getting told in my own praying <clears throat> I was just talking about this with Heather Ensworth a few days ago also just I think well anyway I have the sense very strongly I get told very strongly that astrology is needing to rebirth itself through each of us right and not through like one guru not through one particular teacher who knows yeah. it all, yeah. but each of us as as divine conduits of existence. Yes. Yeah. So that's so exciting. I I would yeah I would love to get more, more even more connected with your community because it sounds like there's a lot of overlap and um and what's coming through me and also what's coming through the people who are in my community is 
I think a lot yeah, of us... it's, abs- it's for sure happening collectively and that that's what I've noticed that when while I was at home doing my experiential um, exploration of galactic astrology after I published a course I received emails from many others that were also doing the same thing within their own sphere of consciousness not being exposed to existing materials but we all individually were guided through experience to explore this through tapping in uh, intuitively so what one of us is experiencing there are hundreds of others experiencing. it's just beautiful to see that as a collective we are so um, rapidly advancing in our connection and connect uh, connecting to cosmos um, and just you know when we do it just intuitively I don't want to say just intuitively but when you have astrological data kind of backing up what you're receiving intuitively, it's just such an exciting, for me, it's a thrill. For me, that is the high of my life to see those uh, kind of peaks behind the cur- creator's curtain, seeing like, oh my God, that's a, like, there's such an amazing intelligence there. I live for those high moments. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I just insert a very short <laughs> sort of little caveat in that. One thing I also feel is so important at the same time as the as this is happening and it is so exciting i love it (laughs) i like get on fire with it but and and it does seem absolutely crucial that we have ways to stay grounded and that's something i'm also observing is that i mean i won't tangent about i can't say it often enough and i repeat it a lot in in my community to take breaks from this type of uh mental quantum kind of uh, experience and I notice it with myself regularly like every few days I just want nothing to do with any of it and I just yep. here now going for a walk yep. and really being present uh yep. it's absolute must mm-hmm. thank yeah, you absolutely that. I have days where I just all I want to do is be with my kids and watch ridiculous movies and I don't know go to the beach yep. and <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah definitely <clears throat> um beautiful so uh okay i would love to switch gears to to the galactic astrology of now um i think i have one more question though about your own your own journey if if you're comfortable answering um do you feel comfortable talking a little about um your own way of connecting with the stars like uh, like your own like you said for example when you tune into draco you feel X, Y, Z. Um, do you feel comfortable yep. talking about your own process with that? Sure. I believe my process was developed naturally over the seven years, holding space for four hours, sitting with a person who were in a better brainwave state. And I was kind of in there with them. I was journeying with them. So my brain was exposed to deep state of really high focus for many hours, five days a week. A number of years um and before that for um i don't know 15 years or so i played in an orchestra i played violin so i was my brain was perceiving you know um orchestra like large one where you're in tune with everyone else's as well so i feel through life my brain was trained to perceive very quantumly with a lot of things at the same time and my strongest clair is clair cognizance where you just have a deep knowing and so when i tune in the information comes in an instant where all of it is known in an instant moment and then i learn to bring it into linear language by trusting what i'm getting realizing that okay like you, i just feel it it's an instant um where things come through and what is coming through, the, the, the what drives what is coming through is always the intention to receive only information that is most relevant and helpful to support the healing and evolution of any individual that we are tapping into. Because earlier on, when I didn't have this pure, clear intention, I was getting all kinds of just entertainment stories there, where you receive a, a lifetime story and it's like, what do you do with it? Like, can I really apply it? So I I recall that moment when I said, okay, I don't want, like, don't be wasting my time with just entertainment stories. I don't want them. Just give me what is most important at this time. So mm-hmm. that that's that's what's happening. Yeah. And then through practice, you kind of surrender to trusting that there is higher intelligence that knows better than my human brain and that they um, 
bring what's most relevant and then just surrendering to sharing what's coming through immediately rather than taking time to think about it because then you mess up with you mess with your brain interfering and that's never good so just like yeah. that. what about you you want to share yours my <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh yeah um yeah sure i what i was gonna say i i'll say what i was gonna say and then i'll i guess i can answer yeah. that um because it's related it, it one thing that feels so important when I'm working with people um, is the reality that we each have our own unique way of doing this, of of connecting, of having the soul knowing coming coming through us that uh, there is no one way, <laughs> and and that we're all unique, uh, we're all different, and because I get a lot of questions, you know, well, how do you connect to the like? Can you teach me how to connect to fairies or gnomes or whatever you know the stars whatever it is and and i i always say i cannot teach you my way because oh, it's that's... it's you know it's it's how i'm particularly wired but i can hold space for you for the wiring in you to basically connect right and then then you will light up and you will find your own way so that that's a huge part of what i do um is holding that kind of space for me personally, um, I get, I, I would say, I, I don't ever say this out loud actually, but you use the oh, word Claire, yeah. so I'll just say, I'll name my own Claire's, which is probably everything. Um, Claire, definitely clairvoyant, Claire audience, Claire sentient, um, all, all of them. Uh, and, yeah, I I get shown things largely in my praying every morning. I get taken I get shown things through the light. Um and I get taken outside the time space continuum and then I'm shown like from that big bird's eye view whatever it is I'm meant to see. Um and that includes like relationships between stars and relate like relationships of all of existence to itself. Um but one thing that's been really fascinating, because I I'm I think it's just since May. So I and I and I'm still learning all of this, like your work, right? So so I correct me if I'm wrong, but I think uh at that point, would the sun have been with the Pleiades? Are you talking about like, 2024 or this year? In 2023. Mm -hmm. So like six months ago. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a very, very strong re experience with the Pleiadian star system. I think around the time the sun was with the Pleiades. Yeah, May. May, yeah. And so now it's also opposite the Pleiades. Yes, so nice right mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. okay. So so I just, just connected the dots about this two days ago or so. Because um, in May, I had a very strong experience where I channeled the Pleiades for the first time ever. Mm -hmm. And then recently, just a few days, three, four days ago, I channeled them again. <laughs> and I was like, wait a second. Oh my goodness. That the sun was okay. with the Pleiades the first time I did. And now it's coming into opposition with the Pleiades and I'm doing it for the second time ever. <laughs> I'm so happy you're bringing that in because I do want to bring this to the audience attention that in case there is a star system that you feel um, affinity to, yet you don't see it in your natal chart necessarily, you can always connect with any of them at you know at a time of year when either sun or moon or Mercury, any of the planets is in direct alignment like Pleiades conjunct sun in May so daytime meditation in northern hemisphere nighttime meditation in southern hemisphere and the other the other way around and in October uh, so and, and this is what has been happening through through these um, regression sessions where people would start bringing in free um, connect uh, stories from star system that was in alignment on that day uh, th that's really when I started paying attention to 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 all this absolutely amazing yeah and so what i've been feeling for example in those two times i've connected with the palladian star system is i'll go into that sort of meditative channeling space and and what i feel is the light of the palladian star system 
comes down, it descends over my body, connects to my whole being, and then it goes down into the center of the earth. And then the center of the earth lights up its own light, like the light of the heart of Mother Gaia Earth, uh, and becomes one with me and the Palladian light. And then it's like, and it, and it feels to me like, I'm getting chills, oh my God. It feels to me like they, what they basically say and what they show me, and I'm guessing this, uh, you feel feel similarly is that they have this eternal ancient relationship they do this all the time it's a regular dance between the earth has a regular friendship i would say in a way of light between its own center and everything else right and then there are times when it when particular connections light up like right now with the Palladians, like I could cry. It's so beautiful. Thank yeah. you for sharing that. And I am sure I can speak for many, many, many humans that experience this spontaneously, just as you described. And it is part of their reason being on earth to be like these crystals. I made a post, I saw this once, but as happening to many, many people uh, around the earth. And I made this on my a personal Facebook profile where I just shared a picture of a crystal and I wanted to honor all the introverts who are never showing up sharing their stories because I see them as these crystals that are hiding in the earth for a reason they're like amplifiers and um, receivers for these cosmic energies that are coming through them so that they can connect into the earth and they are like that's their purpose and you know many would feel insignificant like nobody knows about me but their role is so important for just mm. something like that so you've experienced it consciously as an astrologer you can understand now that it's Pleiades uh, sending the signal and you were the receiver and then you even uh, transmitted it back, uh, deeper into the earth like some, things like that are happening all the time. We are just now consciously becoming aware of it. Mm. I love it. Yeah, so beautiful. And I feel so, like it's just... So we kind of see the micro and macro uh, in its infinite fractal state. So I would see it metaphorically as the neurons in our brain. When, if we really expand the perspective, it's the star systems across the God's mind. Exactly. You know? yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And that's another thing we could have, you know, days of conversation about all of these things. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. One of the big things I'm shown is the parallel between our human earth body and the uh, anatomy of the cosmos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Yes. laughs> Cause we are, we are what we are created from the cosmos. So we do mirror <laughs> the cosmos. Hundred yeah. yeah. mm -hmm. percent. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Wonderful. Okay. So the practitioner course has a whole module on the, figuring out what's your clear and then develop that. So we uh, guide practitioners who go into the course to figure out their own way to tune into stars and soul records and astrology. Yes. Yeah, so. Yes. I was going to mention, yeah. you have a lot of resources for people to figure out. Um, and actually you also have resources for people to, to, um, to practice and hone the ability to tune in, right? Like not only figure out what is my way, but yes, yeah, yeah to work with it. Yeah. Wonderful. So good. So, okay. Yeah. So I would love to spend a few minutes um, talking about now and moving in, you know, we're, we're, so we're recording this on November 23rd, 2023. Uh, and yeah. So what is particularly alive to you in terms of the energies of now, the end of 2023, moving into 2024, anything at all? Um, that Andromeda frequency that I've mentioned before, that, you know, it, it's becoming more and more um, obvious to people how important it is to maintain the connection with their own inner being um, rather than being constantly exposed and just being taken by the current of external um, events. So I would kind of just repeat what we said there about the Andromedan. And so our lunar nodes are a con a conjunct and opposing uh, Andromeda galaxy. So I feel that frequency is coming alive because of that. Uh, so the, right now, the, 
the north node is basically pointing right at the Andromeda galaxy. Is exactly. that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then the Sedna that I've mentioned right now, as we as we speak, that Pleiadian and Alpha Centaurian connection. For me, I've mentioned this, uh, I think, in other interviews, but the Pleiadian frequency that Sedna is now uh, channeling through her uh, is about the kind of very positively focused, wanting to see the best in everyone and everything, in a way almost naive in its shadow side and giving and you know giving second chances and Sedna stories was about her actually then being used and misused like her power was taken away because she tr trusted or, or uh, relied on um, external uh, support so that Palladian historically story and I see it with so many um, humans that have strong Palladian alignments they are like that they are just this a hopeful eternal optimists you know and in the opposing direction we have alpha centauri which i feel as more kind of mature frequency that is more grounded in realizing uh, through discernment what is helpful and what's not helpful so we have sun and mars anchoring that through conjunction to alpha centauri now at this time with uh, opposition to sedna so Pleiadians, Starseed, now have the opportunity to review their trauma related to being misused uh, or trusting uh, to trusting false light, perhaps, or pretense uh, intentions, and now realizing how to take their power back, how to become more grounded, not losing their beautiful light, their beautiful, positive, idealistic, visionary um, essence that is so potent, so important in co-creating uh, new earth or evolving. So not dimming that, but learning how to be more grounded and discerning about what feels off, what doesn't, really fine-tuning their intuition. So that is very potent, I feel, uh, at this time, uh, as we record is till, you know, till the end of the year, I would say. And then another thing that I'm noticing with so that I was thinking about is Pluto is at the end of Cap Capricorn and will hit zero Aquarius three times, I feel, I believe next year. That uh, is aligned to Lyra, one of the Lyran stars called Aladfar. It's, it's I, I don't think it's in any of the texts on ancient stars, but Aladfar, big star system through the practitioners, through the collective uh, connect, um, conversations that we had when we look at soul records of people that have Aladfar in their charts, there is the story of experiencing um, injustice and now uh, looking to resolve it, finding courage and uh, really wanting to be liberated from conditionings of past misuse and abuse of power. Um, so we are not just experiencing this in this reality, but actually it's an echo of Lyran uh, humans from aeons ago that we're going through the polarity uh, games in physical reality like we do now. So what we are clearing personally, experientially, is actually clearing a lot of uh, records um, across millennia. So that Lyran frequency is coming strongly through that Pluto at the end of Capricorn and early Aquarius liberation and healing trauma related to injustice that was strong and one more I had Pegasus here noted and that is coming through uh, high degrees of Pisces what is in high degrees of Pisces we have Saturn and uh, Neptune in third deacon of Pisces. I always paid attention to deacons as well. First 10 degrees of a sign is connected more to the physical experience. Uh, second deacon is all about the mental uh, body. And then the last deacon is about the spiritual body. So Saturn and Neptune being in the higher degrees of Pisces aligned to star uh, beta uh, Pegasi, skeet uh, star system. And uh, in my experience with people that have this start prominent, including in my own chart, that always feels like last minute transformation for the better, like a frequency of hope that is really powerful at the point of despair, where you hit despair, but there is something that comes as a divine blessing, last minute gift, last minute resolution 
of something that felt like it's a lost cause, but you know, so that frequency is coming through strongly through Neptune uh, in particular. So allow those divine inspirations coming through Neptune to bring you solution that you couldn't have think of even minutes before, but exactly when you need it because of the transits, when things, when energies suddenly release themselves, you, it, it'll all be okay in the end. So just strong frequency of hope, I feel throughout next year too. Mm-hmm. And Neptune is also squaring the galactic center. Oh yeah. So when we bring the galactic frequency, so first of all, we'll have sun now, uh, conjuncting galactic center as every christmas season and then early in in january um what is following is it mars i believe coming through the conjuncting galactic center that would make sense because it's currently in scorpio right so frequency will be very strong Uh, so again solutions that come from the quantum field like out of a blue realization that actually you have a choice that you didn't see before so and it can only come through going within rather than externally because conjunctions are like that conjunctions um, so through sun or mars you'll be able to take action and feel empowered to do something that was inspired from within your being because galactic center is conjunct if it was opposing some uh, a planet usually those inspiration can come from external events or through people that hold the frequency of that galactic center and through their alignments so beautiful i often yeah i often think about the opposition let's say to the galactic center when something is sitting at the end degrees of gemini right and so i've often felt into okay well clearly there it's it's there's a relationship here to the galactic center at the end of gemini (laughs) because it's opposite Mm -hmm. the galactic center um that's really interesting to hear the way that you think of it yes so when it. You, yeah so when you think about it the person that holds the gemini high gemini frequency they always look out to the sagittarians high sagittarian frequency as someone that is really wise that holds much higher frequent wisdom whereas gemini always likes to uh, uh, explore a lot of different data but not really in depth so they feel inspired by the opposing galactic center you know oppositions uh, draw our attention so that we can start learning to integrate them into our being like we're inspired by that that's how i'm noticing whether stars or uh, deep galactic points playing out in our consciousness and through experiences does that resonate yeah absolutely that's really beautiful um i have one more question if that's okay so you did a whole video with pam gregory and a whole video with heather ensworth and i will link the videos to this video (laughs) um, for people who are interested uh, where you, so I'm not going to, I won't ask you to go into all of this because people can refer to those other videos, or I'm sure you've done other things as well, but we, where you talked about the distinction between the galactic center, the, mm, so there's, there's 27 degrees of Sagittarius. Yeah. Do you you know what I'm I'm about to ask you? (laughs) Yep. So yeah. the galactic center, at, so actually for anyone looking at their natal chart, um, I, actually, whenever I look at any chart, I would always first look at the high degrees of Sagittarius position of the galactic center, um, mid degrees of Sagittarius position of the great attractor, early degrees of Libra position of super galactic center and early degrees of Scorpio position of the Shapley attractor. So they're like octaves of each other of um, cosmic frequency that is really quantum and I say quantum because people who have strong connection to these in their natal chart they perceive reality differently they really do and a lot of galactic astrology practitioners have these so we've had these discussions over and over just kind of validating the statement over and over that people who have these black holes and um, massive um, uh, gravitationally powerful uh, points in cosmos in their charts uh, anchored by planets so in conjunction or other alignments they really uh, are always pondering the meaning of life and they're receiving ideas that people who don't have these in their natal charts they never think about those things they think about their shopping list what they'll watch later on they never think about the bigger picture 
But people with these supracosmic points, as I like to call them in their chart, they are wired to yeah. connect cosmic energies uh, really powerfully, really strongly. So when we have sun transiting these points, or you can even start playing with the moon's transits because that's the fastest, you know, once every 28 days, moon will hit uh, any one of these points. So you can start paying attention to, okay, if I set the intention to meditate, go within at the time when moon is uh, in high degrees of Sagittarius conjuncting galactic center, is it easier for me to receive divine inspiration to offer solutions in my evolutionary journey uh, at this time and just see what comes in. Um, but as Philip Sedgwick and through many experiences, uh, he has pointed out that when you are meditating on or tapping into these super cosmic points, it's so uh, mighty, such a expanded state of being and consciousness that it's then when you get out of that uh, frequency, you, you probably shift to alpha and beta brainwave states when you're really consciously connecting. When you then bring it into beta brainwave state, it's really challenging to explain it in linear sense and apply it in physical reality. And if you receive an inspiration, it will take you usually six to nine to 12 months to actually see it manifest in physical reality. I I, um, I went to have an acupuncture uh, done last week. And uh, as a gift, I did a super quick reading for the for the guy. There's a longer story where we've met before and it, it was meant to happen years ago and then it didn't. So now I did. And he did have uh, he had three of these super cosmic points conjunct his planets and he confirmed it. Yeah, he thinks like that. He received these inspirations. He has a really long-term vision and he's able to see how any decision of his life will have impact, uh, how it will unravel over many, many years. Like instant moment, he will see how it ends up. So he has these like three of uh, multiple options in his life where each decision creates different timeline and how it is uh, for him to navigate something like that, and um, that it usually takes nine to 12 months for him to actually complete something that was shown to him in an instant moment. So that's the power of these super points. Does that answer? My, mm. Yeah, my my Neptune is at 16 degrees of Sagittarius and my on my IC, which is 14 of Sagittarius, and then it's in a T-square, with my sun at 14 Pisces and my moon at 11 um, Virgo on my ascendant and descendant, right? So that- <laughs> Amazing. I wanted to ask you, right there. sense it from you based on everything, you know, and the, how you communicate, you, you I like mm -hmm. I knew you have to have some of these super cosmic points prominent in your chart. So the great attractor, so the mm -hmm. third one in line. So super uh, galactic center, super galactic center, the great attractor that is pooling 30, um, uh, actually, no, so galactic center, we are revolving around it uh, with everything in our galaxy. Super galactic center pulls 30 plus galaxies around its center. And then the great attractor, which is prominent in your chart, is pulling X amount of galaxies. And then the Shapley, we can't even count and comprehend it. Yeah. And the so, so for Shapley, so early degrees of Scorpio for anyone, when you look at where that's in your chart, is it possible that you have... Uh, life's experiences, engagements, and um, events that somehow are uh, influencing everything else that's happening in your life. Like you, because Shapley Attractor is a force of mighty power that is influencing everything that we know, whether we realize it consciously or not. So that early degrees of Scorpio, and especially when people have planets there, it's this very powerful force behind the scenes that is moving everything kind of the revolving around the principles that are sitting there so it is something you know for me it's certainly like that i have my saturn and pluto sitting there and it's in the sixth house so it's all about always thinking about the you know whatever i do has to have a meaning or purpose in order to serve others like six house for me really is a service to others but also my daily choices daily routines they're impacting everything I do so hugely so I have to be like hyper aware of my Saturn and Pluto and all the karmic lessons and everything because Shapley is sitting there too magnifying everything so mm -hmm. and what do you 
what's your, I meant to ask you this for months. Mm -hmm. oh, so what's your feeling then about two degrees of Taurus, for example, right? It so would have a, the opposition of yep. that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So first of all, because it's first deacon for both of them, it's really about the, this kind of physical reality experiences, how it's playing out and how it's impacting everything with Scorpio, you go deep into multiple layers of your being to really tap into it and feel it how it all affects and when the early Taurus will be all about more the um, surface level experience of your life through interacting with others the earth the health and so on where Scorpio it's like emotional um, and not just your own personal but ancestral galactic lives past lives like infinite layers of emotions that are influencing certain blueprints that you have or conditionings that you have whereas taurus plays it out in physical reality more on a surface does that resonate yeah no yeah yes yes mm -hmm. and there's so much more there i mean <laughs> the yeah, same and because, it's, and because of the position actually if we unwrap it a little more is you know that taurus will it be experiencing things um, the way he's used to, but he will always look out for or wonder because Shapley is calling the attention towards, think about why you are the way you are, why you are living what you're living. There are hidden forces inside you that are driving what you're experiencing. So the opposition is always uh, driving Taurus to evolve through understanding the deep hidden forces that are propelling him through life being inspired and then kind of integrating it because the oppositions and conjunctions like they want to meet in the middle somewhere learn from each other yeah beautiful and my last question i think is so so the south node is transiting libra right now which means that by the end about a year from now the south node will be at two degrees of libra so the nodes will be activating um is it the galactic center mm -hmm. super galactic center yes any feelings on yeah that? so with super galactic center because it's in libra now a um, decade ago it would have been late degrees of uh, virgo so that was a different frequency it was all about perfectionism of in terms of gathering information into infinite amounts like the black holes that's another way they manifest it feels like it's never ending they always consume uh, through the experiences like there's just never end to the story of that theme that you have with the, with the super cosmic point in your life so with that early degrees of libra it's more about the relationships balance harmony to the extremes so that theme you know it seems for all of us through the comments that people are making is that we are experiencing so much in such a short amount of time and we're going through realizations and experiences so fast so rapidly like becoming really acutely aware of the patterns that we have and when that will hit the super galactic center it'll be even more so so i feel we are being trained this really feels like a mastery school uh, in action where we are trained through experience to really master relationships through multiple multiple exposures to it and it feels like this black hole that continuously is bringing it through bringing it through but it's going in a spiraling motion um yes. so yeah i would say it'll just continue the relationships will continue to either drive us crazier and crazier uh but in uh, actually driving us to go inwards to find who we are what's our center and from there return to sanity <laughs> mm -hmm. right mm. so would beautiful. you like to add anything to that or comment no it's just mm -hmm. i'm just in awe taking it all in it's so mm -hmm. i love i just love the way that um yeah when we connect to literally the cosmos not just our solar system um there's just so much more depth and everything comes much more alive and yeah often when i when i pray and i i sort of ask about astrology in my praying <clears throat> the spirit world laughs because <laughs> they say they say i mean come on the cosmos is literally infinite and you guys look at like 12 things <laughs> you know and then they're like and we acknowledge it's a fractal. It's a, it's all good. Like keep doing it. Yes, definitely keep doing it. You're meant to do it. 
And just remember, it's really funny because... <laughs> I'm so glad you're mentioning that because I was at, at one point I prayed to receive guide to, to be appointed guides that can help me continue to develop it. And I received very similar reaction <laughs> to, wow. uh, to just to, to realizing exactly what you said there. And, and so I laughed and I told them, okay, I get it. Uh, but I have so much fun with this. This is there, it's just something so riveting it's such a great word for it about discovering these things that I want to continue to do that so I made my peace with them actually saying you, you've got to just figure it out as you do because you need everything that is human to help you kind of navigate it like I they just let us play but um, yeah it, it's different from their perspective exactly as you said yeah I I was like, yeah but what I feel in your you in you and in your work that I value so much among many other things is that it feels to me like like you're helping to, for us to hold this vast space um, to really come to remember all of life, right? Not to stay so focused on this one tiny little point of our solar system or ourselves or whatever it is. I I, I really feel you as a pioneer who's who's a, a cosmic being, you know, a light being who is holding some space that is absolutely crucial for our world. And I personally have already benefited so much from it. And thank you so much for the recognition. As you were saying that I saw us in future laughing at this period of our life, reflecting, oh my God, we had so much fun with all that chatter about astrology it was like it was fun but at that point in future we we're like this is just it's not no longer relevant like we, we just are having fun with co-creating whatever fun experience and dancing or I don't know what we will do but something really basic and beautiful and and good um, but this is yeah like I believe we are we are embodying the transits really through the experience that we have now with the galactic astrology how passionate we are about exploring it it's based on what we see in the sky so it's just a stage that we are having fun with that helps us awaken and remember and reclaim um, who we really are why we are here so it's fun. it feels like one one portal to the remembering of mm -hmm. who we are like yeah. one one doorway one yeah. of many <laughs> yes yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. amazing <laughs> so good you, i see you too mm. so all right so i would love for you yeah can you share with people um anything that you would like them to know about what you do how to find you um the courses you offer thank you very much so everything can be found through galacticastrology.com there are tabs to all the courses that i have the youtube channel that offers plenty of um, free material including information through the practitioners that uh, completed the course who are really as passionate as me and more about this topic and really diving deep into dedicating their time to serving others and um, the calculator, people can actually see yes. what stars are aligned to their chart. If they go to galactic.com for free, they go to uh, chart and put in their details and they can see uh, what was on the sky when they were born. Um, so they either take time to study themselves and those who don't necessarily have time for it, but are really curious I so encourage them to review the list of uh, certified practitioners. And when you feel your heart expanding, when you review any one of them, like that's your person, follow the excitement in terms of whenever you're choosing uh, any astrologer really, or any practitioner that is there to help you because those sessions are really the most amazing. If you contact someone who uh, maybe drawn you in, whether with good looks or great website and whatnot, but you don't feel really energetically the excitement. It's not necessarily your person. Like go with those that where your heart sinks, like, yay, I want to con connect with them. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. And I think that's that. Well, and I just want to say one thing that I love so much witnessing how you're, you're, you're holding space for your work is, um, and then I really, I'm shown a vision that's very similar from my work is that you, I absolutely love, first of all, first of all, just 
how you as a human <laughs> are so humble. I mean, amazing, just amazing yeah. to me. Thank you. Second of all, you in your work, you are putting so much uh, attention on the practitioners coming out of your courses, right? And particularly your, well, your practitioner course. Um, but on your YouTube channel, you now are featuring a lot of the practitioners in your course. And so um, I really feel, I, I anyway, I, again, I just so appreciate how you are emanating not so much uh, a need to be the center of attention, not that you shouldn't be, you, you, you should be also in and out, you know, you're in your own right. Absolutely. You should be. And you are truly giving the floor, like shining the light on all these other beautiful beings coming through your school who are in your community. Um, and I mean, I could cry again because that is exactly what I'm being called to do also is that, that I feel so strongly that we are not, I'm not here to be a guru. I am not here to be the top teacher person yeah. that people need to, you know, emulate and become a mini me. That would be, that would not be happy for me. <laughs> I don't want that. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but what I really am told is first of all, that astrology, like I said, is trying to rebirth itself through each of us individually. And that there is this like beautiful glowing gem that is each being right that's each person um that is needing to have space held for them so they can remember that of, of who they are in themselves and let that birth onto the planet and so i rarely rarely i can't think of anybody else actually who i know who is doing that for people mm -hmm. in their course or community other than you at this thank moment you. i'm sure there are i'm sure there are <laughs> i just don't yeah. personally know who they are. Yes. Um, thank you yeah. for that recognition i am um, it, it, it just have all happened very naturally but the vision i always have is me holding the door and people are coming through that like i always have it i wake up with it and i'm i'm just holding the door open wow. you know wow so mm -hmm. i guess that's that's how it manifested but um what what came to me as you as you were speaking is that I believe there will be such a high volume of individuals that will resort to astrology guidance, astrology in, slash intuitive guidance in the next decade. There'll be such a huge volume that that's why we have so many uh, being ushered to be prepared to serve high volume of individuals. And I do believe that astrology will become part of school curriculum within the next decade or two. So... Wow there is plenty there's plenty for everyone and it, it's it's it will be mainstream i really really wholeheartedly believe it i see it i i don't see why not it it makes so much sense mm. yeah. Beautiful. yeah um and i could say just a tiny bit about the course that you're going to be that my the course i'm holding that where you're going to be a Please tell <laughs> me about yes that's okay mm -hmm. so yeah so it's called the infinite soul wisdom astrology 101 course and um, it's going to be starting in February 2024. It's going to go for a whole year until February 2025. Uh, and <clears throat> so I put the link with the video so people can find out more information in general. But but really the purpose, what it's it's soul guided. I mean, sorry, spirit guided, spirit led, and all shown to me by the spirit world of how to hold it. So. It is a course where I will be teaching astrology, but it's what it's what the spirit world calls it is actually a portal of remembering. So it's meant to be a sacred journey where people do come back into that beautiful gem, that ancient being that they are, that ancient being of soul wisdom that they are, uh, each individually and then as a collective. And um so <clears throat> yeah so so over the course of that year there will be several sacred ceremonial times where we can come into this you know grounded resonance with the stars with the cosmos with the planet earth with ourselves and with each other to do the remembering through ourselves even regardless of astrology and then <laughs> in addition through the year 
I will be teaching astrology from the evolutionary astrology perspective, but weaving in some shamanic astrology, other perspectives that I resonate with. Um, and, and then there will be some wonderful guest speakers, you, Heather Ensworth, Kelly Hunter, and Chris Skidmore will be doing a monthly, the three of you will just be doing a one-time um, guest talk. And then Chris Skidmore, who is also an astrologer and a psychotherapist and a very into mythology, he's going to be doing a monthly gathering to dive into the mythology of whatever we are talking about that month. But it's really meant to be not so much a cognitive thing. It will include a cognitive experience, but really meant to be mostly the uh, coming through our own being each to remember, to let, basically let astrology rebirth itself. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I see like, it's, and then it's the beginning of a three-year course actually. So year two, I would imagine probably will incorporate much more of the galactic and the star stuff. And, um, and by year three, the vision I have is that it'll, it'll become similar to the way that you are holding space for the people and the practitioners in your community to really birth themselves into the world. That's, that's year three for, in my, my version. So it's really, also, I love. You also yeah. work a lot with the asteroids, right? And um, yes. I feel people are hungry more and more for learning about, about those. So would, would you incorporate those in the first year, would you say, or second? Uh, yeah. More like second year. And also I have a goddess series that I held this year that where the people can still mm-hmm. purchase if they wanted Um talking about a lot of the goddess asteroids and not asteroids, like things like Sedna and um, I think we did it, yeah, Erisina. Mm-hmm. So some things that are not asteroids, but yes. Yeah. A lot of those are in there. So exciting. Uh, so um, honored to, to be called to connect with you at this time. I got a chance to watch your recent video on what were you, zoomed into 2024 and what you feel is coming through strongly and um, that you spent several weeks preparing a document where you looked for um, certain dates where certain planets are aligned where the energies are really really potent so um, um, where can we get those purchase those documents is it yeah nice um yeah or? yeah it's on my website uh, or on my teachable site um and i can put a link here and um yeah i'm holding a astrology of 2024 workshop that comes with those documents if people feel called to come to that workshop and then uh, and then one thing i would love to mention also is i'm holding a free gathering on the december solstice december 21st which will be live and recorded and i would love to have anybody and everybody join that that the purpose of that gathering is not really so much about astrology at all <laughs> it's, it's about um the spirit world is going to be channeled and the spirit world essentially wants to hold space for us to to click into our own ancient soul light being that's what it comes down to so that's such a magical day it feels like a portal day Mm -hmm. yeah so yeah anybody anybody and everybody i would love to have at that free event thank you for everything you do martha so excited to see what's yet to come. Happy to stay connected. You too. Thank you so, so much.